Karen. And good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful day. Sunday is always special. And I'm so glad those who are worshiping with us at the shepherd. You know, it is God's spirit called you to be worshiping. Those who are in sanctuary, thank you for being here. And those who are joining through live stream, radio, and the fellowship hall, thank you. Your gift of presence means a lot to me. Let me see what else I have. Oh, for the people in the sanctuary, let's greet one another with the sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. Good morning, peace of Christ be with you. Good. Many of you may have heard about uh, we are in a bridge state, bridge faith stage in uh, Illinois and uh, CDC has updated guidelines for those who are vaccinated. And I am still gathering information regarding uh, worship. I am hoping that I will have some more information able to share with you sometime this week. So please, if you can, keep eye on our Facebook page. If there are any changes regarding gathering for worship, we will announce it. For today's service, we will follow what uh, the bulletin said, the way we have been doing. So the worship will be the same as we did last Sunday. And I appreciate your understanding and cooperation. Thank you. During the season of Easter, we start with the thanksgiving for baptism. Because historically, Christians were baptized on Easter Sunday. So this is a great time for all of us to remember our baptisms and give thanks to God. So I need a volunteer to come up to help pour the water during the prayer. Thank you, Sue. So, Sue, so you start pouring water when we, when I say we thank you, risen Christ, for these waters and so forth. Okay, great, friends. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life, shower us with life. To you be given all praises with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. 
So you did a good job. Thank you. Let's hear the hymn. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. E-L-W, 392. whereby one of the members of the community of believers is chosen to be the twelfth apostle in order to fill the vacancy created by Judas, Judas's treachery and death. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Uh, together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted to share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these, must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Orsavas, who was also known to Justice, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Karen, what is the second lesson what you have in there? Is that a vision or not? <laughs> Which book? The second lesson. Second lesson is? Uh, John. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, John. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Karen, if I throw the other one, can you read it? So there is those who have bulletin. Um, the reading for the bulletin there's a little confusion with the reading today oh. that um, I changed the reading 
and for the bulletin, it was for the Ascension Sunday, Ascension Day reading, oh. and I think by accident printed out the uh, this lectionary Sunday one. If I give the Ephesian one, can you read that? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Surprise, surprise. Anything can happen. Let me open up the Ephesian one. Um, Um, let's see, Ephesians. Ephesians. Are there Bible? Oh, good. Yeah, Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Ephesians. I got it. You got it? Thank you. Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. Fifteen one five chapter one verse fifteen one five to twenty three. Okay. Well, Thank you. Sorry. Um, well, why don't you go ahead and read it? This is very small. Thing. That's small. Okay. Let me open it up in here. Well, thank you, Karen. Um, Let me see if I can open the Ephesians. 1, 15 to 23. Okay, here we go. 15 and 23. Okay. So the second lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority, and power and dominion, and above every name, that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sorry, Jack, we just picked the wrong one. And the Holy Gospel, which is printed in the bulletin, is Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 53. Oh. Glory. 
置きようのお母さんさ。Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the, the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out at far out of Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Surprise, surprise. Worship is full of surprises. And Easter season is full of surprises. Because Easter season is the time, the season for us to become the new lives of Christ on earth. That's what I start to believe. So whenever I have things happen, unplanned and surprises, which I'm not good at. I try to center myself to do the prayer. And if you do not mind, would you join me in prayer to center our hearts in Christ? And I read this prayer from the daily devotion book the word in season. The word be with you. Oh, no, the Lord is. Hold on. Back up. The Lord be with you. Yes. And also with you. you. Let us pray. What a gift to wake to this day, Lord. With each breath we take, be with us. With every step we take, guide us. In all that we do, work, play, rest. Give us a spirit of joy and compassion. Help us to see everyone we meet as beloved. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me grab a chair. Let me sit down.
This is one of those Sundays. All things are out there. Whew. God sent your spirit among us now. Thank you. Thank you, God's beloved, for praying with me. So today, I liked, I wanted to be the Ascension story. Because it tells us what happened after Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. According to the book of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus stayed with his disciples for 40 days, spoke about God's kingdom, convinced his disciples he was resurrected, he was alive. And on day 40, all of the sudden, he was lifted up to heaven with two promises that he would return someday and that the gift of the Spirit would come to empower them to become the witnesses of God's reign of love. The ascension story was new to me. Frankly speaking, I did not know about it until three years ago when Janice introduced it to me. The Ascension story usually does not take center stage in God's story. But as I learned more about it, year after year, it began to grow in me. To me, the story of ascension of Jesus is becoming a conclusion of the Easter season. The resurrected Jesus finished up his work on earth as a living person and went back to heaven. According to the book of Acts, the first chapter, his last words were, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father had set by his authority. So this is Jesus was replying to the disciples asking, When this God's kingdom come and restore Israel. Jesus answered, It is not for you to know. It is up to God the Father. And Jesus continued, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. <coughs> he encouraged his disciples to wait where they were and trust Amazing things would happen in God's timing. Stay 
in waiting for God's time is not my cup of tea. I do not know about you, but if you are the person who are good at staying and waiting for God's time, I envy you. Because I am not keen on staying and waiting. You know, it feels good to get things done, check off my to-do list, and move on. But there are times, whether we like it or not, when we have to stay and wait in God's time. I'll give you an example. When I was a teenager, I was pumped up with Christianity. I was newly baptized and so eager to tell about Jesus and his love story. I even expressed in public that I wanted to become a missionary like the one I met at school who also led me to Christ. But I did not go to seminary until much later. I wandered off from church for a while and I studied modern history instead. It took much longer for the Spirit to come down to me than to the disciples who only waited for just 10 days according to Scripture. But I tell you that God's Spirit did come down in God's timing. I was not anticipated. It was a total surprise. But God's Spirit did come down. It only happened in God's time. <coughs> and I am sure you too have similar stories. Stories that for some reason, you just don't know why, but things just come, came together mysteriously. And the only way to describe is that it happened in God's time. The disciples had the same experiences. When Jesus was ascended to heaven, they were stumped. It was not their plan. They thought Jesus would with them all the time. But Jesus left. But the disciples remained in Jerusalem as Jesus instructed. Staying and waiting. Because Jesus assured them that God would pour upon the Spirit, which would empower them to become the living witnesses of God's kingdom 
on earth. I bet it was not easy. Some might get more anxious than the others. But somehow, the disciples did it. They stayed and waited. And God's Spirit came down. During the season of Easter, I ended my message by reading lyrics of hymns which included call or calling. I wanted to try that because Easter is a season of Jesus' is calling us to become the living witnesses of God's amazing love on earth. Friends, you are the witnesses of God's new life on earth. So, on this last Sunday in Easter, I'd like to read verse 1 of all Jesus, joy of loving hearts. It reads, O oh, Jesus, joy of loving hearts, the fount of life, the light of all, from every place that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to hear your call. Friends, may the joy of Jesus be with you always. Amen. Okay, Karen, let's hear the old Jesus joy of loving hearts, ELW 658. church, we pray, O oh God, that you raise up the next generation of pastors, deacons, and musicians to serve your people, that you protect believers wherever danger threatens, and that you grant Christians a spirit of unity with all the baptized. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy. Your mercy is great. For the earth, we pray, that you safeguard the trees and all streams of water, that you preserve the ice at the North and South Poles, and that you instruct us in repairing what we need, 
your creation we have broken. For peace and justice, we pray that leaders of nations act with integrity in their decisions, that the poor be respected and supported, that prejudice against people of different color or language or ethnicity be ended, and that our government use wisely the tax money it gathers. We especially pray for your peace in Palestine and Israel. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all the sick and suffering, we pray that you give medical care to all with COVID, that you visit with compassion the people of India, that you sustain those with lifelong disability, and that you embrace those who are listed in the bulletin, and that we name before you, both aloud and silently. Give us life in your name. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all graduates, we pray that giving thanks for their milestone and for support of their families and that opportunities for appropriate employment or further education be open to them. For all who cannot benefit from such schooling, especially for women where their education is forbidden, we pray that you show them a worthy way forward. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all who have died in the faith of Christ, we praise you. For Eric of Sweden and for Queen, Queen Helena, we pray you that at our end we join with all the saints in your eternal presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the joy of the resurrection, in hope for the gift of your spirit, we raise these prayers to you, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power of the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Karen. In sending, God bless us and sends us in mission to the world. I have a few announcements to make. First of all, I like to say thank you for all who helped with Jean's funeral yesterday. You did God's work. Thank you. And thank you for the today's worship volunteers. Karen, Tim doing the live stream. Thank you. Wayne with the sound. Sue help with the greeting and best pounding. And Janice for the, the hymn suggestions. Thank you. And I just want to remind you that the next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, which means this is the Red Sunday. Put on your red clothes or red ribbon or uh, anything red for the worship. Communion will be celebrated in that service. Those who join worship through live streaming you may stop by the church during the week to pick up communion. Hope to see you all with red next Sunday. Friends, receive Lord's blessing. The Lord bless 
you and keep you. The Lord may shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Let's hear the postlude, Son of God, Eternal Savior, E.L.W. 655. Thank you.